Hi, um, I'm really um, excited to be here and uh, talk to you more on functional programming and uh, how to make front end more functional. Who am I? Um, I'm a software uh, developer and I like astronomy, uh, functional programming, React.js, and some uh, uh, games. <laughs> So today, I'm going to talk about some uh, concepts about functional programming. And then hopefully, um, it will make more sense. So we've all seen this uh, picture. Um, and it's obviously a joke, but also kind of true. So functional programming emphasizes on what simple functions can do. And there are obviously tons of concepts. But I am going to um, talk about two simpler ones today. So stateless functions and immutable data, uh, uh, data structures. So let's learn more about them so you will then understand how they may help you. Stateless functions, or pure functions, or this word that I can't um, pronounce, which just means um, no matter how many times the, fun, uh, the same function is getting called, if you pass in the same um, arguments, then the output should be the same, which makes the function really predictable. So let's think about um, the absolute function in math, which should calculate um, a number's um, distance to zero. So this code makes sense, right? You give it um, the same number three times, and you get the same output back. Now, so there are uh, no side effects, and they produce fewer bugs. So we all know that one thing that used to work, and somebody changed something, um, which affected your code, so it makes your code no longer works, which sucks, right? So um, just think about how frustrating you will be if you give it negative one, and then it produces five. So let's look at this do sub function. You give it two A and B, but then you return A plus B plus this other stuff that you don't know where it's from. And then you call this do other stuff, which uh, changes this global variable. And then when you first call the do stuff function, and then you call the do other stuff function, but then if you recall the do stuff function um, given the same uh, parameters, then the outputs are different. But if you write it this way, which you give it three um, parameters, and you don't rely on the outside uh, uh, stuff, which makes the function um, produce the same outputs every single time. The second concept is immutable data structures, because one does not simply mutate a data structure. Let's think about these two, plus plus five, and high plus by. Now, when we first um, look at them, plus plus five simply returns a six. We wouldn't expect this changes all of the fives in your code to six, right? Now, same thing with high plus by. We wouldn't want the all of the highs to change the high by, only um, um, only this one. So if that makes sense, why is it different when we declare variables in our function? So think about this one. We give it A, and then we return something um, based on the um, other function that also takes A. And then we return this object that contains A and B. This can create a problem because we have no idea what this other function is doing. 
So A can be changed. So we have this function, which takes a person, and then we mutate the person's age by plus one. And if that function is currently the func, then A is uh, getting changed. Now Eric has this uh, great code. Um, it says the Tao of immutability, the true constant is change. Mutation hides change. Hidden change creates chaos. So now you're like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but if you think about this previous code, even if we compare the same, um, the person object to the uh, previous uh, person object without a change, it can't tell um, what is being changed. And the change is actually very, very quiet. And now you don't have um, any proof that the person's age is getting plus one. But of course, you can also do console log before and after, but nobody wants that. So if we write it like this, which returns a new object, and we copy every single um, properties inside of the person object, this can um, prevent mutation. But in this case, this is fine because person only has two properties. But imagine you have to copy and paste 500 properties. That gets very tedious, right? So instead, we can use um, this object that assign, which copies every single thing in the person object and only changes the age. But this also returns a new object. So the, um, uh, so the person parameter is not getting changed. Or you can use um, ES6 um, rest and spread. So then we can deconstruct the, um, the age property and copy whatever is, uh, uh, copy the rest of the person object. So now let's talk about functional programming on, uh, in your front end. Disclaimer, I know this is still JavaScript, so things like these will happen, but that's not so bad. Or things like these can happen. But I feel like if you think you can make things better, we should do it. So first things first, let's all not use vars anymore. Let's change it to let's, <laughs> because it's <this is> awesome. <laughs> or even better, use const. So let is very similar to var, but let is um, uh, uh, let variables are block uh, scoped, which means um, so we have a b um, equals to one, and then we do something else, and then then we uh, reassign b to two, but since b is also within the if block, the outside b is not being changed. Um, unlike the var is getting changed. But const, const variables cannot be changed, which means you also have to initialize them um, when you declare the variable. So in the first one, a is um, being uh, declared to one, and then you try to change a to two, and now that caused some um, warnings or errors. Now the second one, you didn't give any values to A. So up to this point, we simply used JavaScript uh, syntax. But if you want to take functional programming to another level on the front end, you can also use immutable.js with React.js, or ClojureScript, or PureScript even. So how many people here are actually um, uh, currently using any of them? Cool, awesome. 
So I'm going to talk about immutable.js first. So this already looks pretty promising. Um, so it has um, a, a data structures like maps or sets or lists. And they follow a pretty similar rule as in the ES6 APIs. But the ones in this library can never be changed, which also means you make a new uh, map, sets, or list every time you try to make a change. So, um, so before this talk, I'm, I have a lot of ideas of how to make the slideshows. And I changed um, a lot of times. But then I was like, OK, I'm going to talk about functional programming. So why not use the functional way of thinking about it? So I make a new copy every time I change the flow of my slideshow, <laughs> which is really heavy right? and slow. And this is so inefficient and stupid. But fortunately, fortunately, immutable.js uses this thing called persistent data structures, which means they only copy or they only change the things and uh, corresponding paths to the data to another copy. And then they actually, and then, um, so for example, you changed four to eight. So now you have to make a new path, H and F and C. But the rest of the paths are actually making the same reference. And this is normally pretty bad because um, uh, sharing data, um, so share data can be changed. But since immutable.js cannot be changed, then, that, uh, then this works uh, perfectly. So I was like, OK, this is cool. This is awesome. So can you all see this? OK. So on, the, um, so on the left, we have a regular map, which you can set it to 1 and high. And then later, you can um, set another one to and by. So now the uh, regular map has size of 2. But if we make a map in immutable.js library, we set it to 1 and high, and then we have to reassign whenever we make a change. So the first map is uh, staying the size of two, uh, one, sorry. And the new one will have the size of two. Another example, say we have this whole big object. And then we uh, reset the z, which is the root, to four. And if we call. The, uh, uh, the map, it, uh, it still has the original data, where if we assign to nested 2, now nested 2 only has z and 4. Switching gears. So we're going to talk about something that you may or may not be familiar with. Closure script. So closure is a dialect of Lisp. And uh, uh, ClojureScript is a dialect of uh, Clojure that compiles to JavaScript. And ClojureScript also has immutable data uh, structures. So it, only, and it also has um, Lisp uh, syntax as well. So this is the same example as the previous one. So we get the person, and we only change the age property and return that and whatever else is inside of the person. And closure script is actually very modular. So you can um, create a sub module inside of the hello world. So then you can reuse it later. And it also has immutable list. So if we have v, one, two, three, and then, um, and then later we add four to it, V is still one, two, three. Now, region. Region, now you can write React components inside of um, ClojureScript. And similar to, clo uh, uh, similar to regular functions as components in React point 14, I believe. 
So now you can recognize a lot of the syntax, like the p tag and the div, and um, even the style sheet. So if all of the built-in uh, uh, data structures are immutable in Clojure, then how do you change variables? So Clojure has this concept of atoms, which is just um, another data structure. And, and, atoms hold, um, and atoms hold immutable data. So whenever you change, it changes by applying the swap function. So like that. So um, so you make so you make an atom in, in my atom, and then you assign it to zero, and then when you ch try to change my atom, it's um, it's actually pointing to the same atom, but it's an atom that's being changed. And region uses its own atom concept, which um, it just refreshes or re-renders whenever you make a change. It's uh, kind of similar how, uh, uh, how components works in React. So if you want to know more about Atom, there's a link to that. And now, PureScript. Um, so PureScript is written in Haskell, and um, it is a strongly typed language that compiles to JavaScript as well. Therefore, if you're not writing in PureScript, you're writing in ImpureScript. So it has the Haskell syntax as well. And back to our previous um, example of the person. So, so you take a person, and then you copy everything else from the person, only changes the age. And this is how you will write in PureScript. So I don't know if um, all of you are familiar with the concept, but if you're only uh, starting, I, uh, I suggest to start with um, immutable JS. And then if you are more comfortable with it, then uh, you can move on to PureScript or uh, ClojureScript. And I know starting something new is very, very hard. And it may be outside of your comfort zone. But I think we should all expand our comfort zone and write something that's more predictable and really easy to think about. And that's all I have. And I really love these things. So, um, so if you want to talk about them, you can simply tweet about it. And all my slides are on my GitHub as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much. Do we have any questions? Oh, yeah, we have a. Uh, OK. Yes, I may have to get back to you on that, because I do have a lot of uh, functional programming books. But I can't remember them in, on top of my head. But I will get back to you on that. <laughs> Sorry. Great. Great. Thank you very much, Julia. Thank you.